This haptic suit could revolutionize the way we experience theater, but it could do much more than that. It could make the entire world of art more accessible for everyone, because right now, it's not. Opera historically is a exclusionary art form. That is true, and anybody who says that is not true is not living in any form of reality. They're gonna get me fired. <laughs> The fact is, for people with disabilities, the arts were never really for them. Art is a mirror to ourselves, and when we suppress access to the arts, we're suppressing ourselves. The problem really is the social attitudes of people. If you don't fit into this prescribed theater etiquette norm, then you don't belong in the space. Literally, you don't belong. With this suit, deaf and hard of hearing people can finally experience music, and it could enhance it for the rest of us. We can make the performing arts sector in Philadelphia the most accessible in the country, and these vests and this technology will help us get there. This is Just Might Work, a show about surprising solutions to our biggest problems. According to statistics, 20% of the U.S. population is disabled. So I always ask arts organizations, are you serving one-fifth of the population? I'll answer that one. It's usually a no. Let me show you. Hi there. I'm just looking to uh, learn about your accessibility options for the blind and deaf communities. We typically try to have two open caption performances per a run of the show. Is that available for every show or just specific shows throughout the run? I believe it is only available during those specific show dates. Okay. Well, that's bullshit. Unfortunately, this is the customer service that many people in the disability community face when interacting with the arts. There are just limited options. It's very, very limited windows of time. That's Neil, the first elected deaf mayor in the United States. And he loves the arts. And that voice you hear is his ASL interpreter, Carrie. When they don't have that level of access to the arts, they lose important contextual understanding of what the world is. A lot of theaters do make accommodations for the disabled community, like caption performances, ASL translators, or audio descriptions, but not all. So for some people like Neil, they have to get creative to experience music in ways you might not expect. We were vacationing one year in New Jersey at the shore, and my sister had seen, oh, there's a cover band that's gonna be playing on the beach. I decided to run up to the boardwalk, and I found the dart throwers with the balloon wall, and I asked, I said, do you mind, could you give me a balloon? So I blew up the balloon, and then I said, feel this. And once he put his hands on the balloon, he realized, ah, you can feel the vibrations from the music through the balloon. We tend to think music is a solely auditory experience, but it can be tactile too. And that's the whole idea behind the vibro textile suit for Music Not Impossible. They've done large festivals, small concerts, including this one we attended last year. There have been some improvements since then, and we wanted to try it out with Daniel Belker, who spearheads the concepts. Put it like a backpack. Okay. To be tight, yeah. Like that? Good, exactly. We have 24 points, uh, and if you can turn around. Sure. And you have four points on wrists and ankles as well. Cool. And you can control them individually. Vibrato. Cool, and I, that's like right, I'm feeling that right on my back, and yeah. like right on the sides. Yeah, you should be feeling this on the subwoofer, yeah. right? Here in the middle right of your back. back, yeah. The skin is the new canvas, and this is the conductor between ideas and emotions and the skin. Our skin has receptors which help our brains understand tactile details or sensations. Each of the 24 points can be adjusted to frequency and amplitude to invoke a different feeling. So Daniel can make a note feel stronger or weaker, higher or lower. What we want to create is an experience that is enjoyable, it doesn't overwhelm you, but at the same time is very precise and specific. Music Not Impossible partners with events around the world to make them more accessible for everyone. I used to call it uh, ending auditory segregation, like there's no more boundaries between who hears and who doesn't. Have you had a chance to try it? I did, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> That's Charlie. He helps to run an art accessibility nonprofit in Philadelphia called ArtReach. First off, it scared me. Like, it's just the immediate jolt of it turning on. You're feeling music. There's something about it that you almost don't realize that you're missing. But there's another problem. 
We have this idea that theater has to be formal and may not be primed for such disturbances. But historically, this hasn't been the case. In the 18th and 19th century, the opera was boisterous. Patrons would talk and even trade horses and sell stocks during a performance. Now it's different, and maybe it's time to learn from the past. When you go in to see the theater or the orchestra or the opera or the ballet, the lights go down, I become quiet, and I sit there in the dark and I just observe. We're trying to move away from that. We're trying to encourage people to be who they are when they're engaging with the arts. I think it's possible to create a different kind of space where everybody can be welcome and has the choice to experience the art in the way that they prefer. And this guy would know how to do it. He's Dr. Roger Odishi, one of the leading experts in the world on inclusive performances. One of the objectives is to really create these multimodal experience so people have choices of how they want to experience that event. It's called a relaxed performance, and they're starting to gain traction around the world. It leans into the idea that theater can be built for different sensory preferences, and Roger is one of the reasons why this movement is happening. If the sound is too loud, they can go to another place in the theater where maybe the sound isn't as intense. Or if the sound isn't intense enough, you can move up closer to the stage. So all the theater etiquette rules are relaxed. If I was talking really softly, what's your need right now? You might ask me to speak louder. So your preference is for more sound intensity. But for someone else, they might perceive the sound perfectly fine. A person with autism has those same kinds of variations. So I always say, keep the art as the art, and then let's create these modifications with the user so they can immerse themselves in this original artwork. All of these people and ideas culminated at an event with Opera Philadelphia. I am so excited on behalf of Opera Philadelphia to welcome all of our esteemed guests today. I offer that we may share an intention today to continue to examine our own lived experiences and connect to our relationship with others. This was an opportunity for us to take a, a moment in time to show the city what it's like to create a space of complete and total inclusion. It's inspiring to create that space where everyone can be who they want to be without judgment. You put on this wearable technology and you're getting to a place that you never thought imaginable. Today it was very emotional, it had a strong emotional impact for me. I could understand the signing, I could understand the captioning, but I really thought that the suit was very beneficial in, in experiencing what we did today. I didn't really have to just fill in the blanks and see what was happening. I was able to have full access to the entire experience. And that's what Resident Philly is all about. Will events like this move the needle and make the arts more inclusive? Can all of us forget the theater of the past and relish in a new, immersive, and collective experience for everyone? We have to learn how to get all the victories that we can. They're not all going to be big ones. The best victories are often those little victories along the way. My hope, my expectation really, is that this gives somebody else the ability to then take the next step. Really, this event was probably the most inclusive event you will find in Philadelphia, and I would dare say, at least in the United States. I want to be able to make sure that we are being intentional about the spaces we're creating, the language we are using, the care we are giving to each other. Because really, we just want people to be a good human. And it doesn't really take that much effort. You just have to try. <laughs>